A quick new idea, daily, from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. Corinne Fisher and Christina Hutchison host one of the most popular comedy podcasts out there. It's called Guys We Fucked, the anti-slut-shaming podcast. And besides being irreverent, outspoken, and very funny, these hosts have a lot of guidance when it comes to women reclaiming self-worth in our image-obsessed culture. In today's talk, Corinne and Christina share the questions they believe people should ask themselves to know how much they're valued. So in the middle of this breakup, Corinne sends me a text and she says, hey, do you want to do a podcast where we interview the guys we fucked and we could just call it Guys We Fucked? And I said, yes, I do. (laughs) So we proceeded to interview the men we've slept with and had relationships with. Uh, And then we started to branch off and talking to our friends, comedians, celebrities, and pretty much anyone with an interesting take on human sexuality. We have talked to a guy whose dad is a pedophile, a couple in an open relationship, and a very famous porn star who happened to date my boyfriend right before I started dating him, inspiring me to create the word (laughs) femasculated. Now, this level of honesty about sex struck a chord with people. We very quickly began to receive emails from all over the world, from people asking our advice. Anything from, how do I tell my girlfriend she's bad in bed? To, I was raped once and I've never told anybody about it. Now, today we chose to dive into why and how some people don't feel ownership over their bodies. So many people write us and describe a time when they thought they owed someone their body. Uh, A time when they had sex, when they didn't want to, pressured themselves into doing it, and then regretted it later. A time when they went on a manic diet to fit a partner's ideal image, or a time when a gal pal's comments about their nipples made them hate their nipples forever. Yeah, and the list goes on. And the thing is, it's easy to relinquish ownership over something if you never really felt true ownership over it in the first place. I look back at my younger self, and there are definitely times where I thought, well, he paid for dinner and got me a flower, so I guess I'll blow him? Now, how did we get here? And who are these mysterious puppeteers who have turned us into marionettes without us really even realizing it? Here are some common sources. Our parents. Your friends. Ah, the media and the beauty industry. There is a black hole of bullshit that we can buy to fix ourselves. (laughs) These are products just for your vagina. These are products just for your face. These are products just for your hair. These are products just for your legs. And if you didn't know that they made makeup for your legs, they make makeup for your legs. I feel like at least once a week, I find something new about my body that apparently I should have already felt very self-conscious about. Uh, I have a meaty vagina. Ew, gross! For the past 29 years, I actually thought it was just a regular vagina, you know, like one for peeing and sex and maybe one day a baby. Uh, But then I learned about vaginoplasty, okay? The fact that a surgery exists for the vagina that is purely cosmetic and can actually be physically harmful and desensitize the vagina creates the idea that if your vagina doesn't look a specific way, there is actually something wrong with it. No one wants to feel like there's something wrong, even cosmetically, with the thing they use to have sex. So very simply, insecurity equals money. And for a very long time, we have let big business profit off of our self-worth. People are putting dinner on the table for their families by promising to fix things on our bodies that weren't broken to begin with. So how do we begin to fix this mess that we've created for ourselves and for future generations? Well, it starts right up here, in the mind that's in the body that everyone seems to be so damn concerned about, okay? Before you give your body to someone, either literally or figuratively, stop and ask yourself a couple of questions based off the things that you value. 
for example. Is this something I want to do or is this something I feel like I should do? Am I attracted to this person or do I feel like I owe them something? Archive your regrets. A lot of people just sweep their regrets under the rug, but your regrets are there for a reason. They're there to help you learn and to grow as a person. Now, we're not saying to request a resume from every person you're potentially going to fuck. Uh, we're just saying be present with the body that you're in and the choices that you make for it. It's funny, we invest all this time in our body and we don't value it. Now, sometimes we get ourselves into a sexy situation with someone and we feel like we have to have sex with them just to not be considered a tease. But tease is just a word that men started using, well, some men, uh, to guilt women into fucking them. Uh, it's my fault I said yes to going out. It's my fault that I wore this tight skirt. It's my fault that I smell so erotic, that my stare is so sensual, that my lips are so inviting. And the thing with that is, no, it's, uh, it's not your fault. Just as a company can call you in for an interview, show you your potential office, get you a cup of coffee and talk about your salary, and then give the job to another applicant, you too can interview for a potential sex partner and then decide that you no longer want to do it after dinner or after dessert or after your top is off without feeling guilty. Your body's not a stock. There's no multiple ownership. There is a sole proprietor, and that sole proprietor is you. So you decide how much sex you want to have, how much music you want to make with the producer who sexually assaulted you, how much longer people without a uterus, <laughs> how much longer people without a uterus will control your access to reproductive health care. How much or how little you want to wear, how much other people's words will affect how you view yourself. So, how much are you worth? The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Special thanks to the organizing team at TEDx UNC. Want to listen to more TEDx talks? Explore the entire archive on the TEDx YouTube channel. I'm Atosa Leone. Thanks for listening and see you tomorrow.